Okay. Hey, I want to watch the, the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack him a gob, it is time for the only news that matters. And the end of the life of Finn Lizzie's bassist and legendary leader, Phil Lynott, was not a happy time. The rock star was barely in his mid-30s, but his world was crumbling around him. Finn Lizzie had broken up in 1983, and Phil's next group, Grand Slam, failed to find a recording contract and split. Phil was thoroughly addicted to drugs and alcohol by this point, limping through a modest solo career without much in the wake of direction. But all was not lost. Lynott learned through some of his friends that a massive benefit concert was being staged in London in the summer of 1985. Even better, it was being organized by his old friend Bob Geldof and Midge Err. For a few months between 79 and 80, Err was briefly a touring Thin Lizzy member and had a good relationship with Phil. Surely this would have been the moment for Phil to clean up, you know, turn things around and reclaim his status as one of Ireland's true stars. But uh, uh, Thompson, the author of Cowboy Song, uh, the authorized biography of Phil Nynott, told RTE that it wasn't even that they thought, no, better not get him. It actually that he wasn't even on the radar at the point uh, for that kind of thing. And I think that is really telling of where he was. And that was only six months before he died. If he had been in a healthier state, this could have been the queen moment for them. You know, the boys are back in town in Wembley. Can you imagine? But it never crossed our minds. And we're both good friends of his. And I think he would have felt absolutely betrayed by that. I think if we had done, you know, asked him to appear at Live Aid, uh, Phil Lizzy would have reformed. Phil was indeed tossing around the idea of reforming Thin Lizzy with drummer Brian Downey in 1985. Years prior, Phil had helped the Boomtown Rats, Bob Geldof's band, secure a recording contract with Ensign Records. Despite his friendship with uh, Geldof and Irv, Phil was not invited to play at Live Aid. Phil helped the fundraising efforts by auctioning a bass and even might attend the event in London as a spectator. But that was the extent of Phil's participation. Thompson said he actually turned up at the RTE studios that day and he auctioned the bass off. He did his bid, I guess, and there's something quite heartbreaking about that. He wasn't somebody who would vent about it, but privately, I think you can be sure that this had a profound effect. It's someone's literally looking in from the outside at this party that's going on, this rock celebration, and he's quite clearly been left out. In the final days of 1985, uh, Phil collapsed and spent his final days in the hospital. On July 4th, Phil died of pneumonia and heart failure, largely caused by his addictions. It was a premature end for one of Ireland's biggest rock stars, but his legacy with Thin Lizzy continues to live on. And to me, he is the greatest, hands down, greatest rock star of Ireland. Number one, Phil Anant is a god to me, man. Oh my God, I mean, very, extremely underrated in America, but perfectly rated over there in Europe because they loved them, as they should, because Sin Lizzie was just amazing. Unlike the Boomtown Rats and Bob Geldof, that prick. I mean, Phil helped them get a, a recording contract. And this is how he treats them? 
My God, as a spectator, maybe? Oh, yeah. Would you give them at least a ticket to go in? I mean, what is that? Seriously. You know, Matt, I could imagine Finn Lizzy playing a blistering 20 minute set. Of course, they got to do Jailbreak Boys are back in town. They might throw in Cowboy Song. And, you know, it, it would have rolled. And it probably would have ignited Thin Lizzy, you know, again. That's what I think, because, you know, but Phil was in bad shape. But, um, you know, and, and this whole thing, like, all right, they're not going to invite me to the damn thing. All right, at least I'll do my part and auction a base. But seriously, the way they treated him, man, if they treated me that way, I'd be like, hey, look, man, I'm going to auction this base for anybody out there. But here's the catch. Whoever wins this base gets to shove it up the ass of Bob Geldof with no lube, with nothing, dry. Should have did it that way. This is Phil Lynott. Who the hell is Bob Geldof? Seriously. He was good in the wall, but whatever, man. Music-wise, I mean, what? He had one minor hit, I Don't Like Mondays, which is kind of okay, actually, I think. But I've heard a few other Boomtown rap songs, and oh, give me a break. You are not the pimple of, of even his harmonica player, Huey Lewis. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, he sucks. Fuck Bob Geldof. All right, now I'm going to rank the Great Thin Lizzy albums. They put out 12 awesome albums. And here's my reading off. Not a lot of people would have at the very bottom Chinatown. But I do. I like every Thin Lizzy album more than Chinatown. But I don't dislike Chinatown. I mean, I love uh, Sugar Blues, Killer on the Loose. There's a lot of good stuff on that album. But that's because Thin Lizzy's so awesome that my the one that's at the bottom still is a kick-ass album. All right, number 11, their first album, Thin Lizzy. Love it, but it's different. That Eric Bell era, it was... It, it really was... Well, yeah, you know, it's like Deep Purple and stuff, you know? Rod Evans was one way. But this was more drastic than that, so... Uh, yeah, I, I, but I love it. The first in Lizzie album. Then at number 10, Shades of a Blue Orphanage, which is the second album with uh, Eric Bell. And it's great. I dig it. I got it on vinyl, and I have nothing bad to say about it. I like it. But my favorite with Eric Bell is number 9, Vegabonds of the Western World. Uh, great album. Dig it. Fun. Love it. All right. And number 8, Fighting. That's, I love that album, man. Fighting My Way Back. Great stuff. Number eight. Number seven, Nightlife. The first one with, you know, Gorham and Robinson and love it, man. Sha la 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 la. She knows. A lot of good stuff on that album. Great stuff. Now we're going into the top six, which is. What we heard was some great Thin Lizzy albums. These are now awesome Thin Lizzy albums. Started with number six, which would be, by people that I read online in comments, would be their number one favorite. But it's my number six. But as I'm saying, we're going into the awesome. And number six, Thunder and Lightning. I love the hell out of that album. I'm not bashing it at all. I think it's awesome. I like five more, but... Man, Holy War, Cold Sweat, Heart Attack. Oh, my God, that the title track. This is the one. Sun Goes Down. Love it. Anyway, that's at number six. At number five, Bad Reputation, man. I love this album. This album was um, the first one I bought. I remember buying this because it was in one of those you know, cheap bins, the cutout where they cut the side of the albums. I mean, the little top corner. I bought it for, I don't know how much, maybe 99 cents or something. And I took a chance on that album. Now, I knew the boys are back in town and jailbreak, but I know nothing off 
this album and it blew my mind. And I love Bad Reputation. And number five. And number four, the more most popular US album, Jailbreak. Ah, this album. Warrior, man. Emerald. Oh my god. Cowboy song, title track. Oh, Angel in the Coast. Whew. Love the hell out of this album. At number four. All right, at number three, Johnny the Fox meets Jimmy the Weed. Love Johnny the Fox. This should have, I don't know, man. This was the follow up to Jailbreak. It should have been just as big. Yeah, you had songs on there like Don't Believe a Word, Borderline, you know, uh, just so many amazing songs on Johnny the Fox that. It's, it's weird, man. Johnny. That's a great tune. God, I love this album. All the way at number three. At number two, Renegade. Yep. That one's not very liked by a lot of people, you know, because it has Snowy on guitar. But nah. Like I said, Snowy was on Chinatown too, all the way to the bottom. But look at that. Renegade all the way at number two. Angel of Death. Pressure Will Blow. The title track. Hollywood. Facts. My God, Mexican blood. Such an amazing, amazing story in that song. An amazing, amazing album. At number two, Renegade. At number one, Black Rose with Gary Moore. This album owns, it has been my favorite thing of this album since I first heard the album. I go, this is the best one. And I still feel that way. How do you feel? Leave it in the comments below uh, what a prick Bob Geldof is. Or if you think, oh man, Bob Geldof is a great guy, man. What he did to Phil Lynott, it wasn't his fault. He doesn't deserve a bass, a bass guitar shoved up his ass. Why do you say such things? Leave comments below like that, but be respectful, okay? Or I'll make you disappear. And please, subscribe to my channel if if you haven't, and, you know, ring a little notification bell. I really would appreciate that. And like the video. It's good for the YouTube algorithms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>